What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how to set up a 7 days to die dedicated server now that version 1.0 has finally released. With it, there's tons of changes to the game and of course, a new dedicated server that we can install and get going. So let's go ahead and do it. First of all, downloading your 7 days to die dedicated server. In Steam, you can head across to your search bar in your library, search for 7 days and you should find 7 days to die dedicated server under tools here. When you install this, you're able to simply right click, manage and browse local files to get all of your server settings, files, etc. here. This is super simple to do, but what if you want to host the server on a computer that doesn't have Steam installed or that you're not going to be playing on? Well, you can use a tool called Steam CMD. It's an official Valve tool, and in order to get it, you'll find this page linked down below, which is my blog, and you're able to find quick links from here. Steam CMD can be downloaded with this link. You'll save it, open it, and extract it to a folder where you'll install your server. So I'll make a new folder here called 7 Days Server, and we'll extract Steam CMD into it. Then, next to it, we'll create an update.bat file with this text in it. So right click new text document and we'll be replacing everything including dot text with this update dot bat. Hit yes when prompted after hitting enter. If you don't see file extensions, hit view followed by show and make sure both file name extensions and hidden items are ticked. On Windows 10, you'll find it on the ribbon bar at the top view followed by the two tick boxes on the far right. Then we'll open this with a text editor like notepad and we'll copy this by clicking the copy button, paste it in here, save, close and open update.bat. This will download some required Steam CMD files and shortly after, it should prompt us saying it's downloading the 7 days to die server. And there we go, you can see it's downloading the 7 days to die server and shortly after, it should be placed in Steam apps, common, followed by 7 days to die dedicated server. But for now, I'll close out of this as it's pretty much the same as what we have on Steam. Right click, manage, browse local files right here. So let's talk about setting up and configuring your server. Once all of these files are downloaded, you'll find find a start dedicated.bat file, which is all set up, ready for us to launch our server with error logging and things like that set up. This is fantastic that it's automatically done for us. But in order to change your server's name and customize things like that, you'll need to open serverconfig.xml with any text editor. I'll be using Sublime Text for an example. At the very top, you'll find different groups of settings in here. We have general server settings, including representation, such as server name. So we'll set here, troubleshoots server, for example example, a server description, so troubleshoots 7 days to die dedicated server, a server website URL, which will show in the server browser as a clickable link. So I'll put my own website here, techno.co, a server password, should you wish to password protect your server, set something very strong here, a region, just to tell the server list where our server is. In my case, I'll be choosing Africa as I'm located in South Africa, but yours may be different. Language, I'll leave as English, but there are a few supported languages here. Then we get to the networking section. In here, we don't need to change anything, just remember what the server port is. By default, it's 26900, and unless you're hosting multiple servers on the same computer, you don't really need to worry about this. Scrolling down, slots. You can change the max number of players, reserved slots, admin slots, etc. The admin interfaces section allows us to enable a web dashboard, should you wish. I'll set this to true, just so we can see what's going on with that. We also have Telnet enabled. This is essentially Archon, a remote command service. We can use Telnet, which is installed by default on many systems, or manually on others, that we can connect to our server and run commands as an admin. Just keep in mind this is enabled by default, and it may be something you want to turn off if you don't want to run commands on your server via Archon. Make absolutely sure that if this is enabled, you set a Telnet password that's strong and nobody can guess, obviously stronger than what I've typed in. The rest of these settings are entirely your preference, all the way from anti-cheat to spawn rates, etc. For the most part, I'll leave everything else as is, save this file, and we can close it. Just keep in mind what you set as the passwords. To actually start your server, run startdedicated.bat or choose launch in Steam. I'd recommend using start dedicated. Now your server should be generated and you'll see a window like this, as well as a background window that we can press any key to close when we're done with it. You'll need to wait for your server to finish loading, which should be right after the text stops scrolling. The first launch should usually take the longest as it's generating the world and things like that. And there we have it. Our server is started on 8080, which is the admin server and our actual game server is running as expected. 
So we can join it by starting Seven Days to Die on the same computer that we're hosting this game on just to test it out. So here we go. In order to actually join your server, use join a game and at the very bottom, click connect to IP. In here, you'll leave it as 127001 to connect to your own PC and 26900, which is the default server port. When we click connect, we'll need to enter a password if you set one. Mine was strong, so I'll submit it and you should see some movement on the server console as we load in. Then we're actually gonna play on our own server. So just like that, we're in. And of course, at this stage, hypothetically, other people could join and start playing with us. But there's one small issue. Other people and other computers don't have permission to connect to our server just yet. So for now, we'll close out of it, quit, and we'll handle some general housekeeping like firewalls and port forwarding. Don't worry, it's a lot less scary than it sounds, and I'm going to make it super simple for you. If you need any extra help, you'll find guides down below for more advanced or more in-depth port forwarding and things like that. Heading across to my blog page once more, linked down below, the text version of this video, you can scroll down until you see this colorful section, and these are quick commands to add seven days to die rules to our Windows firewall. If you'd like to use Archon to allow remote admin commands, copy this second block of text over here. Otherwise, if you only want to share your game server, copy this first block of commands over here. Once you've copied them, hit start and type in PowerShell, then we'll be right-clicking and running as admin. Once PowerShell opens up, hit Control V to paste in these commands, paste anyway, and hit enter a few times to make sure that all of them have run. Now we've successfully allowed all of the required ports for our seven days to die server through our Windows firewall. If you were to get your computer's local IP, someone connected to the same router or Wi-Fi hotspot as you should be able to join your server and play with you. In order for that to happen, hit start, type in CMD or terminal if you have it installed, and in here we'll be typing in IP config one word and hitting enter. This will show you all of your different network connections and adapters. Look for the way that you're connected to the internet, in my case Ethernet, and you'll find your IPv4 address. This is your local IP, 192.168.1.50. If I'm connecting to my server, I'll enter this IP address on the computer next to me connected to the same router instead of 127001 and we'll be able to play together. But that's not exactly people over the internet. In order to get your friends to join over the internet, we'll need one extra step and that is port forwarding. This sounds super scary, but it really shouldn't be. I've prepared a simple sample router to show you essentially what you need to do. You'll log into your router's control panel or settings page and head across to something like port forwarding, application forwarding, etc. Then you'll be able to enter external and internal ports in some way or another. Sometimes it'll be ranges or just one block or just an option to enter numbers. You'll see something like this. We need to port forward 26900 through 26903 in order for our game server to work. So in my case, as I can enter a range, I'll enter 26900 for the external port and 26900 for the internal port. And as we can enter a range, I can enter 26903 here for the second one. This will port forward all numbers between 26900 and 26903. Yours may only accept individual ports, in which case you'll do this once for each port, or it accepts comma separated ports, in which case you'll need to type out each individual port. Either way, when you're done typing in these, select protocol as combined TCP and UDP. Otherwise, you'll need to create a rule once for TCP and again for UDP. Then your local IP here should be the local IP address of your PC. We did that in a previous step, but if you forgot, open up a terminal or command prompt, type in IP config, scroll up to how you're connected to the internet, in my case, Ethernet, find your IPv4 address, and in my case, it's 192.168.150. I only need to enter the last set of digits on my router, so I'll type in 50 here and we're done. When we click add, we've now successfully port forwarded our 7 days to die 1.0 server. Your steps may be slightly different. If you'd like to allow Archon through as well, you'll be doing the same with 8080 and 8082. So in my case, something like this. It only needs to be TCP for this one and our local IP. Bam, there we go. Now we port forwarded the game and the Archon console. At this point, you can simply Google what is my IP and people over the internet should be able to connect to your server as long as it's actually running. That's how this is completely free. As long as your PC's on, you're running the server and it's connected to the internet, you 
are doing everything that's needed in order to host your server. So nobody's going to charge you anything. It's completely free. The only reason you may want to go with an online host is because you don't want to have your PC running 24-7 or a computer running 24-7 hosting this. You don't have stable internet, etc. But for most people, hosting a dedicated server yourself is going to be the cheapest and the best option, especially if you're only playing with a small group of friends. With this running as it is now, I should be able to connect to it. People next to me should be able to connect to it. And of course, people over the internet should be able to connect as well. That's fantastic. But before we close off this video, there's one more thing we need to learn. How exactly do we save and close our server? As right now, all I can do is click the close button in the top right. Well, at the bottom of this window, you see a text box where you can enter commands, hit enter, and it'll send it to the server. We can use help to get a full list of commands that we can run on our server, but the main ones we're interested in here is probably going to be the save world and shutdown commands. So, in order to save our world, we'll use save world, and we can use shutdown to close our server. Let's quickly speak about Telnet and Archon. In order to remotely connect to your server, hit start, open up a terminal or command prompt, and we'll be typing in a Telnet. If you see something like this, then it's installed. You can close the window and reopen it to close Telnet. If you see command isn't recognized or something along those lines, you'll need to enable Telnet. Hit start and type in programs and features, open it up, and in here, you'll be able to choose turn Windows features on or off. In this pop-up window, scroll down until you see Telnet, tick this, OK, and you may need to restart your PC. Once it's done and you can run Telnet, you'll simply use Telnet, your IP address, followed by 8081 with spaces in between in order to connect to your server. So I'll paste it in and now I need to enter our Telnet password. This was set up previously in our server config file. I made this the super strong password of 1234, enter, and now we've successfully logged on to our server. Here we can run help to get the same list of commands, save world to save our server, and of course, shut down to close our server remotely. That's fantastic. But what about the web interface? Well, we previously saw that mentioned in the config as web dashboard, and it uses port 8080. If we open up our browser and head across to 127.0.0.1 colon 8080, it opens up this page over here. We can visit the console tab where we can run commands and things like that pretty much directly. So on the console tab, we'll get commands as a cheat sheet, command history, so we can see what commands will run, players to find out who's on our server, items, add entities, and we can customize our server on the settings tab over here. Currently, it's just map markers, and these are the options that we get. Under the mods section, you can manage your mods or see what's currently installed, and these are what I have. The console tab doesn't seem to allow you to run commands remotely, which is a little bit weird. This web page is more of an admin view than an admin control. We can quickly get commands, we can see what's happening in the server console by clicking the button on the bottom right, but we can't exactly run anything. This is more just for monitoring and seeing how your server goes. That's pretty much it. It's not as helpful as Telnet, and that explains why there's no password for it. Anyways, I would have hoped that there was a password and we could run commands, but I guess not. For the most part, we've now set up our server, joined it ourselves, got PCs next to us to join it, got friends over the internet to join it, and of course, we've learned how to remotely control it, save our world, close it, etc. And that's really all we need to know to manage a 7 days to die 1.0 and above server. So, hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.